Like, what is it about glyphosate that causes this cancer? Is it just this cancer or are there others? Uh, the evidence is strongest linking exposure to glyphosate and glyphosate-based uh, herbicides like Roundup, which is the, the best known um, trade name. Uh, with with non-hydrosophoma, but there's uh, a new study coming out in just a, a matter of days linking uh, glyphosate uh, and glyphosate-based herbicides to leukemia. Uh, and it's it's certainly possible that there are other blood cancers and perhaps other cancers that uh, are where exposure to glyphosate, especially relatively high exposures over a long period of time, uh, contribute to uh, uh, new cases of, of cancer. Uh, the mechanism through which Roundup and glyphosate causes cancer, it, it's actually fairly simple. When spray solution falls on human skin, it, it moves through the skin into the bloodstream. Uh, and really for the same reason that when farmers spray a glyphosate-based herbicide on weeds, it has to move through the epidermis of the weed to get inside of the, the plant to, to kill it. And so the, the so-called surfactants uh, or inert ingredients that are used to manufacture a glyphosate-based herbicide actually accelerate the movement of the glyphosate that lands on an applicator's skin into their bloodstream. Once it's in their bloodstream, uh, about 10% of cardiac output at all times is being pumped through bone marrow. Bone marrow is where all of our, uh, uh, a very specialized cell called hematopoietic stem cells. These are the cells that make our new white blood cells, our red blood cells, our platelets. They're manufacturing in our bodies every day we're alive, literally billions of new cells. So these are very active tissues with a lot of, a lot of DNA replication going on and, and a lot of differentiation. Um, and so when glyphosate is in the bloodstream, it flows right into bone marrow and it, it can come, the, the glyphosate then can come in contact with these hematopoietic stem cells right as they begin to differentiate and um, either become a white blood cell or, or a red blood cell. And that differentiation, it actually requires a mutation in the DNA of that cell. And what sci scientists have now shown very clearly is that glyphosate causes a, a, a mutation in that change in DNA as a stem cell begins to become a white blood cell that triggers abnormal cell growth that can lead to non-hydrosophoma. So it's really the ability of glyphosate to disrupt DNA replication in, in people's bone marrow uh, as their new blood cells are being formed. That's where non-hydrosophoma and leukemia start. I'm hearing from a lot of parents who are on all organic diets, um, eat super clean, and their family members have really high levels of glyphosate coming back in their urine analysis. What's going on? How is it? Where is it getting into people who are going to the grocery store, buying all organic, uh, you know, where, where is it coming from? It, and if their yards are, you know, I, I know some of these families, their yards are all natural where they use, um, they for sure don't use any Roundup. Um, but like, is it coming in through the water system? Like if they're taking baths or drinking tap water, it's certainly possible that there there could be some glyphosate in the water. Uh, it, it's possible that there could be some in the air if they're in an area where there's a lot of spraying going on. But uh, you know, it, it's it's very difficult to avoid glyphosate completely uh, through the American diet. Now, I suppose that there there are some people that are that are able to find all of their food organic, and when they go to a restaurant. They also uh, only will uh, uh, seek out or organic food, but glyphosate is so ubiquitous in the environment and in the food supply now, it, it, it's very hard to completely avoid. 
is the non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and leukemia, is it mostly through the glyphosate touching the skin or does it occur also through eating? Once glyphosate gets into the into your, your into your blood, the 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 pathway to non-Hodgkin's lymphoma or leukemia or any other health problem is it, it is is the same. But um what consumers need to to understand is that is that the the levels of exposure that they're going to get to to any any pesticide uh, are going to be so much higher if they actually are are buying it and applying it themselves uh, in their yard or on their small farm or or uh, in in landscaping. Uh, the The vast majority of the people in the uh, in the round of non Hodgkin's lymphoma litigation were were heavily exposed to uh, Roundup when they they applied it, and and many of them for 10, 20, 30 years. It takes a lot of glyphosate and a lot of Roundup to to make uh, uh, people sick, and and unfortunately, uh, in the case of this particular chemical, because it's been used for so long, and it's used in so many different ways, and the the company has promoted it as safe, as biodegradable. As uh, you know, a lot of the plaintiffs in litigation uh, have have said to juries that they were they were told it was safe enough to drink, and this was the this was the general um, uh, mythology around uh, glyphosate and glyphosate based herbicides for for many years. So people didn't worry about it getting on their skin. They didn't they didn't wash it off uh, if if spray solution uh, blew back uh, and got on 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 their skin and and that's that's the uh, that that's what has created this you know tragic uh, breakdown in the system with uh, so many people being inflicted with non hodgkin's lymphoma that likely was caused at least in part by their exposure to roundup what i um, didn't realize until just a few years ago was that a lot of the genetically modified seeds are actually being modified to withstand pesticides. Correct. And primarily glyphosate, although there, there are also other corn, soybean, cotton, uh, and a few other crops that have been genetically engineered now to also tolerate applications of, of other herbicides, in particular 2,4-D and, and dicama, which are two other uh, um, important widely applied herbicides. And the, the reason that the, the industry uh, has created these seeds is that then the farmer can, after the crop has come up, uh, you know, and it's maybe two feet high, uh, and there's some weeds in it, uh, they can then come in and spray with Roundup and kill any of the weeds, but leave the crop unharmed. But the problem was that worked great for five or seven years. And essentially all of the weeds in corn, soybean, and cotton fields that were planted to these genetically engineered seeds, all of the weeds were, were uh, very effectively controlled by uh, Roundup and other glyphosate-based herbicides. Uh, but because farmers just sprayed year after year with Roundup, the weeds uh, developed a genetic resistance. Uh, they, they, there were certain certain mutations in the weed populations that where the weed wasn't quite as susceptible, and 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 so some weeds survived, and and set seed, and and then the next year the farmer comes and sprays, and those plants didn't get killed and they set more seed. And before you know it, glyphosate resistant weeds became quite common. The, the, it, the, this technology came on the market in 1996 and many weed scientists projected it would be five or six or seven years before the first glyphosate resistant weed emerged. And they were exactly right. It was 2001 in a in a soybean field in Delaware, where the first glyphosate resistant weed was confirmed. Uh, and this field had been planted several years in a row to round up ready soybeans and, and corn. So once Roundup wasn't working on all weeds, then farmers had to start spraying an additional one or two herbicides to control the weeds that now uh, were not sensitive to Roundup anymore. And then 
and then the next rounds of, of herbicides become less effective because uh, you know mother nature doesn't doesn't take a day off uh, resistance is is constantly evolving and and now we there there are many farms in the United States where there's a three or four or even a half dozen resistant weeds that are not just resistant to Roundup but are resistant to several other herbicides. So it's a it's a it's a weed management has become a a really significant problem for many American farmers.